Hi, I'm Professor Stephen Nashavan, and I want to talk to you a little bit about this uh, claim, electrons go through nodes. So, uh, the, as a context for this, I'm just imagining first that we have an electron that's just what we call a free electron. It's just moving from left to right uh, uh, in a, a straight line there and uh, along this coordinate x. And quantum mechanics tells us that because uh, uh, electrons have wave-like properties, uh, all waves have an amplitude. And that amplitude varies from positive amplitude, or what we call positive phase, to a negative amplitude, negative phase. So that's what's happening here, positive phase, negative phase, positive phase. It's not to say that the electron wiggles up and down like this, not at all. It's just that along its path, positive phase, negative phase, positive phase. Okay? And, uh, and I've drawn two uh, instances of this. Um, the uh, second one here is uh, the electron is moving faster, and quantum mechanics tells us that the oscillation between phases is a little bit, is a little bit um, packed in uh, more densely. I should add one more thing here, which is that what we're graphing here is what we call the real part of the amplitude, because in this situation, the, um, the, uh, the amplitude of the wave function is actually a complex variable. So we're just focusing on, on the real part. So I can talk about, uh, because... Uh, because I'm looking at this distance from peak to peak here, we, we can talk about the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, I'm just going to give it the symbol uh, lambda and a subscript dB that stands for de Broglie. And you can see what's happened here is that the de Broglie wavelength has got uh, from a larger value to a smaller value when the uh, electron sped up. Okay. That is encapsulated in a formula that uh, de Broglie presented, and it goes like this. The de Broglie wavelength, this distance from, from peak to peak, um, uh, goes as, it's equal to this constant, which is Planck's constant, uh, divided by the mass of the electron. Uh, the key point here is that it's also divided by how fast the electron is going, V for the speed of the electron. So you can see that the bigger the speed, the smaller the de Broglie wavelength, which is just what we've seen here. As we went from slow to fast, the de Broglie wavelength got smaller. Another circumstance to, to, to think about this in would be a conjugated polyene, as, I, as I've drawn here. And what I've depicted here are the, um, what's called the, the, the highest occupied molecular orbital. This one would have two electrons in it, and then I've also drawn the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, and uh, which wouldn't have any electrons in it. And uh, if you look at these solutions through an electronic structure program, what you will see is that it has this, uh, what we call this nodal structure. So um, one thing to notice about this is that, uh, well, there must be a little bit of motion from the top to the bottom of this, of, this, of this molecule just because I see a node here. Remember, electrons go through nodes. But the thing I want you to focus on is the transverse nodes, the nodes uh, that get laid out uh, left to right. And um, you know I can see that these electrons must be able to go left and right because look at all that probability density from here to here. But in which case is the electron moving faster? Well. I can see that the distance from here to here, that must be the de Broglie wavelength about, right, from here to here. That would be lambda de Broglie for the HOMO. And I can see that in this case, lambda de Broglie um, is smaller, okay? And according to our formula, when I have a smaller lambda de Broglie, it must mean that the speed is faster. So the way we understand this is that, sure, electrons are zinging back and forth um, along the um, you know the width of that the length of that molecule, but they're moving faster in the LUMO, slow, a little bit slower in in the HOMO. And how do we know that? Because of these transverse nodes. There's only four of them here. There are five transverse nodes there, and uh, that's what allowed us to identify the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, good.